This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. Working with a CAD survey. So often architects and designers are going to be starting with a CAD survey that they're going to be importing in. There's a number of things that we need to do in order to prepare that so it's useful for us to use in Revit, both from a property line standpoint, as well as other key 2D elements. There's also the 3D side of things that we can make use of, like the contours. And we can actually make a topple surface based upon the contours that are given to us. Now, in order to get that into Revit, we want to do a little bit of work with it before. So we're actually going to be working in AutoCAD. I've saved the files as R14 files, so you'll be able to use any version back to R14 if you don't have AutoCAD. It might still be a good idea to just watch this and get a feel for how this is done, how a drawing is prepared before it's brought into Revit. So here are the steps here, you can read those. We're gonna start with number one, open and save as the AutoCAD site drawing. Here we are in AutoCAD, I'm in 2012, but I'm opening the drawing, it'll be an R14 drawing. And we'll just open that up. Okay, now we're going to do a save as. Okay, and I'm just going to put a dash A. Okay, so then we'll save that. All right, what's our next step? Erase extra stuff. Well, what is that? I made this file. I made this based upon my experience with working with files from civil engineers, surveyors, etc. And this is often what you'll find, and I'm going to go through all the different components, but sometimes you're going to find a lot of extra information that may not pertain to what you're working on. It may just be extra information that's in there. But what you want to do before you bring it into Revit is refine the information. So just erase the other stuff that you don't need. It'll make your job a lot easier. Now, I've erased a bunch of things here. I'm going to do a zoom extents just to be careful. Aha, notice this. This could cause problems in Revit because you'll bring in this CAD file and all of a sudden you've got this thing just way out in the distance and it has nothing to do with your file. Maybe it was just someone sketching. That's bad. You want to get rid of stuff like that, especially if it's farther than 20 miles because that's the magic number in Revit. A file cannot be bigger than a radius of 20 miles from the origin. Let's just erase it. I'm actually just windowing and using the delete key on the keyboard. Now I'm gonna hit E spacebar, and here we are. This is our lot, and this is our contours and building footprint, etc. Next step, fix and mark the origin. So we want to make it so the zero, zero is what we want the zero, zero to be, not what the surveyor decided the zero, zero is going to be. For bringing that into Revit, it's just gonna make it easier for us to get that into Revit. Okay, so what's the zero, zero? How do we know where that is? Let's just draw a circle. I find that to be the easiest way. So we can type in C spacebar. And then we can type in 0, 0, 0, let's say. Okay, there's your origin. Now that's just in no man's land. That's not really useful for us. So what we're going to do is we're going to move this whole thing over to 0, 0. Okay, so we've identified the 0, 0. Let's use the move command, M, enter. And we can just select everything except for the circle. Okay, did I get everything? Yep. Okay, and I'll just do a right click. Then I'm going to click on my desired zero, which is that. And I'm going to move that to zero. So AutoCAD has a zero, zero, and that's where we've moved it to. And we can leave a circle there if we want. That's fine. We've got to pay attention to layers, of course. That's on the property line layer we can see. Okay, so we've moved and fixed the zero, zero, and we've marked it. Next, separate the 3D and the 2D using W block. What do you mean 3D and 2D? Well, if we were to look at this in elevation, this is usually what you see when you're working with a civil engineer or a survey file from one of those disciplines is you're going to see that they've put the contours up at the actual sea level, but all of the parking lot lines, the property lines, the building lines, all that stuff is down at zero, zero. All this stuff is up at sea level based off of the sea level height. So in this case, I happen to know that it's exactly 200 feet from sea level to the top of our foundation. We need to separate these two because they're going to cause a conflict in Revit. So 
You can do it in this view as long as you can see everything okay. If I just type in W block, I'm going to use just the 0, 0, 0 as my base point. And then I'm going to click on Select Objects. I'll just window those top objects there, hit Enter. And then I'm going to give this a name. So I'm going to click on this little extra button here. Okay, so here I am at my folder. And I'm going to call this one Begin A. This is going to be the 3D because these are the contours. I picked the upper ones, the green ones. So I'll just say Save, and then we'll say OK. All right, let's make a W block for the 2D stuff. OK, same idea. We're going to leave that at 0, 0. We're going to select our objects using that little arrow. Select our 2D stuff. You can also do this by the use of layers as well. You can turn off contours, select the 2D stuff, or vice versa. So that can be done in plan view as well. File name and path. OK, so I'm just going to say this is the 2D stuff. And save. OK, next step. So we want to note the angle between the true and the project north. Now, what does that mean? Well, again, in AutoCAD, this has been rotated to the true north. So what we're going to do is project north is just going to be straight up and down. So we could just simply draw a line. So use the line command, L, enter, or just use an icon. Then I'm going to go to annotate and dimension, and I'll go to angular. So I'll pick this line, that line, 15 degrees. So we've taken note of the angle. The other thing we want to know is the elevation of that actual point. That's something that's usually provided in text format right here on this plan. So usually there's a little piece of text, and, and I'm going to write it in right here. Top of foundation, or it could be top of foundation wall, or it could be top of footing, or there's a variety. You have to know that. So that's going to be, in our case, we're going top of foundation wall, and we know that to be 200 feet. Now, just one last thing before we finish preparing these. Let's just take a note of the units. So if I do a distance command, so if I just type in DI, enter, and then I just measure a couple points here, so between there and there. Notice it's giving me 18.3333. That's 18 feet. So this is decimal feet. You have to watch out for that because that will come into play when we link this into Revit. We'll have to specify the unit that it's using. Great, so I'm going to save this and shut this down. Open up quickly those files that we made. So number one, in AutoCAD, we have one which is 2D. OK, and we can do a ZE. OK, and we can just look at this in plan view. OK, very good. And we can save that. Close it. So we've got the property line and then the building footprint. Just close that down, and then let's open the 3D one. This will provide us with the contours. Now, if we look at that in 3D, just by using the view cube, you can see that there's actual, I'm just using my shift middle mouse button, same as in AutoCAD. You can see there's actually elevation on those contours, and that's common. OK, so we can just go back to the top. We can save that and shut that down. So we're all ready to go.